Hello there. Last week we saw the young Daniel, exiled in Babylon, beginning to make a name for himself, serving Nebuchadnezzar. In this week's chapters, he and his friends continue to walk the corridors of imperial power, though some people still disdain them as mere exiles and outsiders. Amid questions of conscience and allegiance, they see astonishing signs of God at work. Nebuchadnezzar's testimony in chapter 4 is remarkable, partly because of the continuing spiritual naivety it exposes. This is a book of two parts. Daniel also encounters heavenly powers. Bewildering visions give stunning insights into an unfamiliar world, predicting empires well after his own time. Daniel's prayer in chapter 9, responding to Jeremiah's prophecies, is profound and moving. Daniel, now far too old to travel back to Jerusalem personally, is still deeply concerned for his people's future. Ezra is also a book of two parts. The author himself will not appear until chapter 7. This book explores life after the exile, soon after Daniel's time. Chapter 1 mentions temple vessels which may have included those Belshazzar foolishly desecrated in Daniel 5. There are echoes of the end of Judah's monarchy. Zerubbabel, a leader in the temple rebuilding, was the grandson of Jehoiakim, one of Judah's last rulers. Cyrus was mentioned in Isaiah's prophecies about these events. The end of two chronicles contains a shorter version of the decree in Ezra 1, authorising Israel's return from exile and new beginning. With the encouragement of Zechariah, Haggai and other prophets, the altar and the temple are both completed. Some issues here echo those in Daniel. How can God's people serve him under imperial authority? Chapter 4 deals with several instances of conflict from different times, using a kind of flash-forward effect as the writer collates accounts from later periods alongside those of Zerubbabel's day. Revelation began with seven letters plus some visions of heavenly worship. This week's chapters include seven seals and seven trumpets alongside further visions. There are patterns in these two sevens. In each case, the first four show events unfolding in history. The next two reach beyond the earthly perspective and the seventh goes over the edge of history before we return to see the same events from another perspective. There's also some of the symbolism that John loves. For example, he hears about 144,000 people sealed as God's own but the crowd he sees immediately afterwards is an uncountable multitude from every nation. Once again, questions of authority and allegiance emerge. Revelation contains many echoes and images from the prophets, especially Ezekiel and Zechariah. Further visions express how the worshipping church touches heaven and produce a growing confidence that those conflicts will eventually be resolved. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, as we read these chapters, may we hear your voice prompting us and revealing what we need to know and to do. Point us to Jesus, we pray, and to God our Father, so that we'll learn more of what it means to be God's people. Amen. <laughs>